Okay, folks, it's your buddy Mike Messier, Mike's Instant Movie Review. Just saw the movie, kind of a preview screening of uh, Sound of Hope, the story of Possum Trot. Um, so when I saw the uh, kind of like preview or just like a little clip of this thing, I thought this was kind of like a Sound of Freedom sequel, and it's really not, except that Angel Studios is the same studio that did the Sound of Freedom was it 2023 that that was like a big hit? And so here we are, the summer of 2024, and there's more kids in the world to save. And this time the kids are our own, uh, American kids in the foster system. This story goes back to East Texas where Possum Trot is, uh, 1996. Uh, it's always interesting to see things you know, that are depicting the 90s because there's like one cell phone in the movie. Most people don't have them in the film. And uh, it's it's good. I mean, it's a good movie. It's a good message. It's a good story. What's it all about? Um, I guess in a word, adoption. I guess in a word uh, or two or several, you know, troubled kids that are in the foster system that have been a lot of times neglected, abused, mentally abused, physically abused, they get put in this uh, cycle of the foster system. And uh, this lady in the movie, the first lady, Donna, first lady of the church that she and her husband, the pastor run, she has like this epiphany when her own mother dies. And apparently her mother was like a single mother of 18 kids, which is a lot. And when her mom dies, she has like this uh, epiphany kind of like a vision of, of these different children coming together. At the time, she she only has two kids. Uh, one of them uh, suffers. Uh, he, he was uh, born with low oxygen in the birth, and uh, so the kid kind of has some issues. And she's got uh, another daughter, a daughter who's, you know, uh, doing pretty well. And so this lady, Donna, you know, says like this epiphany, this vision that she's going to adopt all these kids and going to have a house full of kids. And of course, her pastor husband, who's just trying to get by and pay the bills, he's a bit, um, how you say, uh, not a, I guess he's opposed or he's tentative. How are we going to pay for all this, you know, type of thing? So we do have some conflict in this movie. It's not all roses and sunshine. The conflict initially is, is the husband going to get on board with uh, adopting these children? And um, even though he's a pastor and the good book says do all the nice things, you know, he's, he's kind of a man of practicality as well. You know, he's got bills to pay. And then we have more um, conflict. You know, conflict's always a big part of a movie, which is the system is kind of personified by this woman, Susan. And she's, you know, does her best to match families with kids. But, I mean, and she's she seems like a real great person. And these are all based on true events, by the way. So Susan, who's basically at the, you know, the, the foster system, um, her big shtick is we're trying to get more funding from the state. We're trying to get more money from the state to, to support this, this uh, intricate system of foster care. And uh, when this couple comes along, the pastor couple and First Lady Donna, and they want to adopt these kids. First, they take two, and it's going along fairly smoothly, uh, except the son is a little traumatized. The adopted son has a fear of, of water because he was probably abused by, by water from his previous home. Uh, but eventually, they seem to be doing okay, and they're like, hey, we'll take another kid. And so... Uh, they're like, we want the toughest kid you got. Now, that's the, the, the husband says that. So basically what's happened is the husband has had this big change of, of, of uh, spirit. He's now all in. He's all invested. He he's, wants more kids and so forth. And um, so they're like, give us the toughest kid you got. Now, this is, you know, one of those things. Give us the kid that nobody else wants. So, so basically Susan's like, well, uh, don't want to give you Terry. Well, who's Terry? We want her. Well, Terry's the real hard ass. Terry, we have met her previously in the movie. She uh, thinks she's a cat, the little girl. She's like 12 or 14 at this point. She, she believes, she kind of has this thing where she, she fades into this fantasy of being a cat. 
um, because that's her defense mechanism from dealing with reality. The reality is she's been abused a lot. So she kind of goes into this thing where if I'm a cat, they can't hurt me. And that's, uh, we've seen that in more recent times. Uh, we've, we've heard of these things, you know, of, of children taking on the personifications of animals or the animalification of people, whatever the fuck. So we're back in 1996, 97, and this is happening. And I won't ruin the scene for you, but basically the pastor has a really good way of dealing with the cat issue. Uh, but Terry turns out to be a handful. Now, I do want to pay a special acting note. Uh, I think that the kid actor who played the Terry character was very strong, uh, very strong in a tough role. It's tough to play like a troubled kid without kind of hamming it up. And I think that this kid actor did a really good job. I'm guessing the kid actor is 14, maybe 15, maybe younger, but whoever the kid was did a really great job of playing Terry, this troubled kid, because because a lot of the shine of this movie kind of becomes the Terry story for a while because Terry is kind of like the best example of the, the troubles that some of these kids can bring to the families. And now here's another round of conflict, which is uh, a lot of these families in this small church are inspired by the pastor and his wife to go out and adopt these these kids, but they don't know that this is going to be tough, you know, and that the, the system, so to speak, I think how it works, correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone's an expert, but I guess the families who are foster parents get funding from the state. But if you actually become uh, adoptive parents, either that funding is greatly reduced or it's uh, taken away. They're like, oh, well, if you want to adopt the kid, we're not going to financially support you. So it's kind of a, a tough thing here because people who are, and I had a good friend of mine who adopted uh, a few children. He was a foster father uh, to, to kids. And so I didn't really appreciate, I'll give him, you know, credit for doing that because this movie kind of really illustrates some of the troubles and the sacrifices and, and the generosity of these adopted couples to take these kids in. So um, the rewards, what are the rewards? Well, I guess like any other kid, you, you know, and you feel like, hey, I'm, you know, the future and uh, teach them well and let them lead the way or whatever the fuck. So, I mean, I guess there's a point to having children. Uh, so these, uh, but I think this movie is really pretty good. I mean, very, you know, very good. It's definitely... I think all the actors, the, the lady that played the first lady, Donna, of course, she's basically the central character, but even, you know, the husband's a close 1B in that. And then Susan, um, who kind of represents the system, but, you know, she's a good person, really. She's busting her back for these folks. She, she's a good actress. Elizabeth Mitchell was the name. Um, and as we've we've seen, if you've seen these other Angel Studios movies, they always try to hit you up at the end. Like right as soon as the movie ends, they want you to pay it forward and buy a ticket for somebody else and so forth. So I, I saw this movie kind of at an advanced screening. Um, when you have these apps and you have these subscriptions, this was Cinemark. I think I saw this movie uh, gratis for free. Uh, but AMC, uh, you know, I tell people this. They don't listen to me. Sometimes they do. But the Cinemark uh, subscription thing, it's like, uh, I think it's 11 bucks a month. You get one movie ticket a month, which is, you know, more than the value of seeing one movie. And the good thing with Cinemark is that those credits carry over, right? So you don't lose your movie if you don't go that month. It carries over. And you get all these wonderful things like this free screening. That'll happen every once in a while. Sometimes you get a discount on concessions and so forth. Um, and AMC and, and Regal have even more intricate uh, plans where you pay by the month and you get a bunch of movies a month. And I tell people this and they don't always act upon it, but I try. I try to help people and they usually don't listen to my advice. But anyway, uh, I really like this movie. What can I say? I mean, it's a heart warmer. You know, you gotta, you know, I'm not a parent, so I can, uh, you know not appreciate it on the level of some people who might but i mean you definitely feel like is there a crisis you know, the, at the end of the movie it says 400,000 kids are in the foster system you know 100,000 kids are looking to be adopted so i don't know how the numbers all work and everything as far you know 
uh, and I'm sure it's a complicated system, um, but if you are in a position to adopt or to be a foster parent, and it might be something to consider, and this movie will probably stir your heart. So is there anything in this movie that I would say could have been improved or whatnot? Um, I don't know, because I think with this movie, it did a pretty good job of making you feel like you were in someone's life, like you were in a slice of reality here. You know what I mean? Like you felt like these are real things happening. I don't know if there was anything that I could jump in and say, fix this or fix that. I mean, I was, I was expecting and it did happen because this couple, you know, first lady Donna and the pastor, I think it goes by MC or MK or something. Mitchell. Anyway, um, that's the, that's the husband's name. They have their own natural born daughter and it's like I'm just waiting for her to kind of explode and be like fuck you know fuck these other kids you know so eventually that happens I mean there's there's you, know, you see enough movies you watch enough television you kind of know like okay the natural born kid is gonna explode because they're sick of these other kids getting all the attention and eventually that happens eventually Donna has her little fit of rage um, as Terry continues to push the envelope, like I said, the movie kind of comes, it becomes the Terry show after a while and, uh, credit to that young actress, because I think she did a really nice job of not playing the, the boo-boo face, not playing like the puppy eyes for sympathy, but, but, you know, playing a tough character that's hard to like, but somehow, you know, likable. And then at the end of the movie, they show you like all the the people in real life, the real life people, the representations and such, and that was nice. So anyway, what the fuck? I mean, it was a good movie. It's emotional. Uh, things like Last Summer Sound of... See, that's why the movie was kind of making me think it was a Sound of Freedom sequel. It's really not, except it's the same studio and Children in Need are both the topic. But last, this is not like... Um, I still don't get how some people thought that The Sound of Freedom was some type of bad movie last year. I mean, it's, it wasn't QAnon related. It wasn't any horse shit related. It was just a fucking movie about a real topic, which is uh, unfortunate. These, uh, these kids getting abused. So I don't know how anyone could have an issue with the movie. Uh, but with this, um, you know, this is a real deal. I mean, these kids are really, they, there's real kids in real need and, Real down-to-earth people are trying to help them out. So, I mean, you know, a tip of the old hat for me to all these wonderful people who are doing these wonderful things. Um, you know, it's it's good. I mean, uh, so I thought, was there anything in the movie, though, that I thought... I'm trying to... I mean, I think the thing is, if they're going to go down the path, which they did, of the Terry character... We don't really get into, like, what fucked her up. I mean, we kind of do. Like, why is she thinking she's a cat? Like, the thing with the cat of me kind of saying that that's a defense mechanism, I'm kind of just winging it on that because they don't really explain, like, why does she think she's a cat? They do show her in an early scene, like, in a foster f family. that It was a foster woman that wasn't very good, and she had a cat. And Terry was kind of bonding with the cat, but we don't really get into why her her mental process. And uh, I don't know. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is. And also, there might have been a moment, I, I guess, uh, when the father, the pastor there, like, he's really pretty reluctant. Like, he's pretty not wanting to do this, but his wife is basically telling him what to do. Um but it's like, where does his mind change? And I guess that's when uh, the little son, the little boy that will be his adopted son eventually, comes out of the car and runs up to him and gives him a big hug. I guess that's his uh, changing point. But I think they, that could have been milked a little bit more. Um, as in, like, they could have squeezed the emotion. And also some of the music, you know, like, I, I don't necessarily like every movie that has, like, the fucking typical violins and emotional music. And we had a lot of that, especially, it seemed, in the second half of this movie. Uh, you know, the, this, the device of the, the voiceover stuff, we had the voiceovers in this one, but I'll give it a pass. You know, I'm not going to, it didn't bother me. So I thought it was a good movie. So MikeMessier.com. 
One Mike Messier, one man in a camera films for my movies. Thanks.